welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. I am so excited about today's collab. Thank you so much to Robert over at Freaky Fit for hosting this collab. It was a fun, fun one to do and it is perfect timing with fall right around the corner. It's actually fall weather where I live. It's already cooled off. The leaves are starting to turn. And of course, fall is my favorite time of year. So I was extremely excited to participate in this collab. Make sure you check out all of the channels linked down in the description box so you can get your fill of all things fall. I can't wait to share this fall recipe with you. I'm going to be showing you a copycat Starbucks pumpkin scone recipe. These turned out so good, so good. In my opinion, don't tell, but better than Starbucks. And the smart points were a quarter, less than a quarter of the points of a traditional Starbucks pumpkin scone. So you can have your pumpkin and eat it too with this recipe. So if you wanna see what I have in store for you for this collab of all things fall and Starbucks pumpkin scones, just stay tuned. I'm going to be making copycat Starbucks pumpkin scones with the icing. We are even going to include the delicious icing. One of my favorite things for fall from Starbucks, but they are 26 smart points. So let's make a WW friendly version that tastes just as good. So you're going to need some milk. Now you can do almond milk. You could also do fat free, half and half, whatever you prefer. The original recipe uses heavy cream. So I'm gonna be using this creamy almond breeze because it's really thick like cream, but literally like an eighth of the smart point. So you're gonna need some sort of thick, creamy milk, all-purpose flour, some sort of powdered sugar alternative. So the sucrin icing is delicious. You can purchase this off of Nettrition's website. There is a link down in the description box. Click the link, it'll take you to the website. They have so many WW friendly things. And one of the things I always buy off of there is sucrin. So I'm gonna be using this sucrin icing and also the sucrin gold, which is a brown sugar alternative. These two taste so much like the real thing. It's crazy and they're zero calories. So we're gonna be using both of those. You'll also need some baking powder. I'm gonna be doing Dax pumpkin spice. Instead of doing all of the different spices, cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon. I'm just gonna use this. It's all inclusive, it's delicious. It is zero salt, which is so great before weigh-in. It is all natural, no MSG, pure ingredients, absolutely delicious. If you're interested in Dax, which I highly recommend, especially the pumpkin spice, I do have 10% off. It is here on the screen. So if you click the link down in the description box, enter my code here on the screen, you'll get 10% off. They have over 20 seasonings and every one is outstanding. Definitely pick up the pumpkin spice. Tis the season, guys. Make sure you have this on hand. So I'm definitely going to be using that. I'm also going to be adding a little bit extra cinnamon, especially to the icing, just to give it that more authentic spicy flavor. You'll also need some canned pumpkin. Make sure you're using the 100% pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie mix. Some salt and lastly, some vanilla extract. I love the Trader Joe's Pure Bourbon. It is so good. So let's get started on our copycat Starbucks pumpkin scones. So for our scones, we're gonna combine all of our dry ingredients. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour. We're also going to add one third packed cup of brown sugar. And again, I am using the sucrine gold that you can purchase off of Nettrition. We also need one tablespoon of baking powder. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then we're going to need some salt. So just a dash of salt, about a half of a teaspoon, and that'll kind of bring out those flavors. You always want to use salt in baked goods. It just brings out all of the flavors. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon because like I said, I really wanna bring in the flavor of cinnamon. And then I'm going to add in my star of the show, my Dax pumpkin spice. So I'm gonna really kind of load up on that because I want about a teaspoon and a half worth because that is what all of the other spices would equal if I wasn't using Dax. So I'm just going to take my spoon and I'm going to kind of mix this together. And I didn't show you guys, but you'll also 
also need some butter. So I went ahead and measured out one half of a cup of the I can't believe it's not butter light. I popped it into the freezer to get it nice and cold. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that in to our dry mixture. So there is our dry ingredients. So let's grab our butter and add it in. So here's my one half of a cup of my light butter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop it by chunks here into my dry ingredients. And then I'm gonna use two knives and I'm going to cut it into my dry ingredients until it's a formed about the size of little peas in my flour. You can also use a pastry cutter, but this works just as well, uh, just to go ahead and cut it into your dry ingredients. Make sure your butter, again, is about the size of a pea. So we're gonna get this cut into all of our dry ingredients, and then we're moving on to the next step. After your butter is cut in, we're going to put this mixture into the freezer for about five minutes. And in the meantime, we are going to put together our pumpkin puree and get that ready to add to our dry ingredients once it comes out of the freezer. While that's in the freezer, I've grabbed another bowl here. And to this bowl, I'm going to add one third cup of the pumpkin puree. And then I'm also going to add two thirds cup of my milk or cream or whatever it is that you decide to use. And then we are going to just mix this together until everything is incorporated and combined. And then we will be adding this to our dry mixture once it comes out of the freezer. I just removed my dry mixture out of the freezer. Here is my pumpkin puree and almond milk. So I'm just going to add this to my dry mixture. And then we are just going to stir this until the dry portion of our scone is moistened. We don't want to over mix this. So we're just barely going to mix it through until everything has a little bit of moisture. And then we're ready to form our scones and get them into the oven. So your scone dough should be on the crumbly side. And we're gonna go ahead and add this to some parchment paper here on our counter. And we're going to form this into a seven inch round ball, or as close to seven inches as you can get round ball. And that's what we are going to use to form our scones. So we're just gonna take our hands here and we're just gonna form this into a round ball. You can even use your spatula and just get it as round of a shape as you can. And the thickness, you want it about an inch and a half or so thick. So get it into that circle shape, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut it into our scone pieces and get it into the oven. So we're going to cut this into eight wedges. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it down the middle. You'll see that I do have my nonstick cooking spray out in case I want to use it to spray my knife. And then I'm also going to cut this into another two sections and this into another two sections. And then I'm gonna cut this. And then that will give us those eight pie shaped scones and then these are going to go on our baking sheet and we'll get these ready to go into the oven so we have our scones out here on our baking sheet and the last step before these go into the oven is we're going to take a little bit bit more of our almond milk and we're just going to brush it over the top of our scones and that's going to seal in that moisture and it's also going to add that nice coloring on the top of our cooked scones and then this is going to go in the oven at 450 degrees just until our scones are cooked all the way through so we're going to get them brushed with that little bit of almond milk and then we're going to get these into the oven our pumpkin scones are out of the oven, you guys. These look so good, and they look like Starbucks. So I'm gonna let these cool, and while these are cooling, let's mix up our glaze and our pumpkin spice drizzle. So we're gonna put together the glaze. So in my bowl here, I have one cup of the sucrine powdered sugar, and to that, I'm going to add half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract, those of you that watch my channel know that I generally don't measure. I just kind of eyeball it. And then we're going to add in our almond milk or cream or whatever it is, 
is that you're using a little bit at a time until we have the desired consistency of our glaze. We don't wanna pour the whole thing in there because we don't want our glaze too runny. So we literally wanna do a little bit at a time. And in my bowl is three and a half tablespoons or so of the almond milk. So look, this we're getting pretty close to the right consistency here. And we've only used about half of the almond milk. So that's actually a good glaze consistency. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit more. And there you go, look at that. That's a perfect consistency of glaze. So now let's put together the cinnamon swirl. For the pumpkin spice drizzle, I have about a quarter of a cup of the powdered sugar. That's unfortunately all that I have left. The recipe actually calls for three quarters of a cup, but this is gonna have to do. And to this, I'm going to add one tablespoon of my canned pumpkin. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. We're also going to add in a little bit of our ground cinnamon because this is where a lot of that spice flavor is gonna come from. And then also our Dax pumpkin spice. And let's go ahead and give this a quick mix. And then we are going to add in some of our almond milk until we get that nice drizzle consistency where it's runny enough that we can drizzle it over the top of our scones. So just a little bit of almond milk at a time again, same way that we kind of did the frosting until we get it thin enough that we can kind of drizzle it over. Oh my gosh, this smells so good, so fall and pumpkin-y. So now we're getting there. So see how our consistency we can even add just a little bit more of the almond milk. And then we're going to be ready to frost up our scones as soon as they are nice and cooled. So I have my cooled scones. Look at these. These look so good. So Starbucksy. So to our scones, we're going to take our glaze. And I'm just going to drop it over my scone. You can see that I do have them here on some parchment paper. And it is going to run off, which is just fine. But you do want to go ahead and drop that glaze onto all eight of your scones. And we're going to give it just a couple of minutes for it to dry. It will speed up the drying process if you put it into the fridge. So I will most likely transfer these to a baking sheet and throw them into my fridge for a few minutes to get this glaze nice and hardened. And then we'll put on that pumpkin spice drizzle. But oh my goodness, you guys. If this isn't a Starbucks recreation, I don't know what is. So I just pulled my scones out of the fridge. The glaze here has hardened a little bit. I'm going to drizzle over the pumpkin portion of it. And then we are going to put this back onto our drying rack, give it an opportunity to dry a little bit. And then we will be done with our scones and I'll be back to show you what they look like when they're all done. Again, I'm gonna put them back on my drying racks and just give them the opportunity to dry just a bit more. And then that way the everything, the glaze and this pumpkin spice and everything will dry nicely on top of our scones, but it looks absolutely delicious. So I cannot wait to try these. So I'll be back with one plated up and I will give you the smart points. So here are our copycat Starbucks pumpkin scones. I just tried one of these and they are outstanding. You can see there's two missing. I'm gonna have one and I baked one up for my husband, but this is what the finished product looks like. I did add just a little bit of that Dax pumpkin spice to the top. My goodness, you guys. So wait until you hear the smart points. So you can have one entire scone and these are huge, as you can see, and one scone is only five smart points. Who needs Starbucks when you can have a copycat Starbucks pumpkin scone for only five smart points? I hope you enjoyed seeing my recreation of the traditional Starbucks pumpkin scone. I'm telling you, these were better than the Starbucks, and five smart points, can you believe a huge, full-size scone for only five smart points. You can't go wrong. These would be great to take to work, to serve with a nice piping hot cup of pumpkin spice coffee. Oh, I'm dreaming all things fall. Thank you again to Robert over at Freaky and Fit for hosting this collab. Again, 
This girl loves fall, so hit me right in the soft spot of my heart, and I hope that you guys enjoyed my recipe. If you are new or you came over from another channel, welcome. So excited to have you as part of my YouTube friends and family. Please make sure you let me know down in the comments who sent you over so that I can thank them. And if you are heading over to one of the other channels from mine, please let them know that I sent you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit that little subscribe button and that bell. That way you'll just be notified whenever I upload. I upload pretty much daily. You don't want to miss a single video because we are chock full of recipes and fun on this channel. I'd love it if you thumbs up this one and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this recipe. Are you going to try it? And are you shocked at the smart points that you can have a scone for? Because I definitely was. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Thank you again, Robert, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye!